Welcome to the Walls and Curtain Walls video presentation. We'll start a new Revit file and draw a new exterior brick on CMU walls in level 1 that we can use to show the different wall tools. You can change the visual display of the detail level to fine in order to see the different layers of wall material. We'll go to the 3D view and take a look at sweeps and reveals. Under the wall tool, sweeps and reveals can be placed on the wall after it has been drawn or placed within the wall type. A sweep is a projection that comes away from the wall and the reveal does just the opposite and cuts back into the wall surface. Select wall sweep and then pick the wall and you'll see that the sweep projects away from the wall. <clears throat> Going to the reveal, the reveal cuts back into the wall here. You can place horizontal and vertical sweeps and reveals by selecting in the ribbon horizontal or vertical placement. Once you've placed a sweep you can pick restart wall sweep to place others and the same applies for the reveals. You can place them in elevation or here in the 3D view to place them on different elevations. If you select one of your sweeps, you can then pick Edit Type in the Properties and change the profile under Construction to a different predefined profile, like Wall Sweep Brick Soldier Course 2 Bricks. When you pick Apply, you'll see that the sweep updates to the new profile. Keep in mind that we may want to duplicate this original sweep. Going back to the default profile and picking apply and OK. If you select one of your sweeps as we already did, you can use modify returns to change the angle of the sweep or the way that it turns the wall. An angle of 45 will look different than an angle of 135. In the elevation view, we can place them on different surfaces, like this sweep that goes all the way across. If we select that sweep, we can pick Add and Remove Walls to select the portion of the sweep that we'd want to remove. We can create our own customized sweep and reveals by going to the application menu, Big R, go to New, and over to Family. For reveals, we're going to look for the family file called Profile Reveal. There's the wall face and the wall, the actual wall that's on the right hand side. We can create a closed loop shape for our custom reveal. Save this family file as a different name to retain the original template. We'll call it custom reveal, pick save, and then load it into your project. In the 3D view, we can start the reveal tool and then pick edit type in properties and duplicate this system reveal calling it custom reveal then changing the profile under construction to our custom reveal. When we place it, 
you'll see your custom profile. The sweep is very similar. You can go to the application menu and create a new family. This time we're looking for profile hosted. In the profile hosted family file, we'll create a sweep that projects from the host, which is the wall itself, to create our new sweep. Save this one as custom sweep and then load it into your project. In the 3D view, you can start the wall sweep tool, pick the edit type button in properties, duplicate this system wall sweep, calling it custom sweep, and changing the profile to custom sweep, the one that you created. Placing that sweep, you can see your custom profile for the reveal and the sweep. If you start the wall tool and change your wall to the exterior brick and CMU on metal stud, and then pick edit type, you can pick duplicate and replace that number two with custom reveal and pick OK. Pick the preview button and change the view to section. You'll see that this wall type includes reveals and sweeps. If you pick the edit button next to structure, in the bottom right corner you'll see sweeps and reveals. Let's take a look at the sweeps. Go ahead and pick sweeps. There is a parapet, concrete parapet at the top of the wall at zero distance and a sweep that's a brick soldier course but it's a distance of one foot four from the top of the wall but it's offset negative three and five eighths inch bringing it back into the wall flush with the face of this masonry brick wall. And there's a precast sill here that's three foot four from the base. You can load up another profile and set it up with the distance and offset or you can add a default sweep and change its profile and settings. I'll go ahead and delete this one. There's also a duplicate button here so you can duplicate one that's already there and then change some of these settings. These other three look like sweeps but if I pick OK and go to reveals you'll see that these three are actually reveals that cut back into the wall at these specific distances. If I want to change one of these reveals, I can simply change the profile to our custom reveal, pick apply, and see that it cuts right back into here the wall. You'll see the different sweeps and reveals that were a part of this wall type. Let's take a look at split regions. In the project browser, under families, instead of starting a wall tool to change its type, in the project browser, under families, walls, basic walls, you can highlight one of these walls and then pick it again and in the type properties pick duplicate and let's replace that too with split region then pick the preview button 
and change the view from floor plan to section. Pick the edit button under structure to take a look at the layers. Highlighting the finish one, we can pick split region and then in the section view, use this small knife tool to pick points along this outside finish masonry brick to establish different split regions so that we can assign different material to those regions. Then highlight finish one and pick insert a couple of times to insert layers for those different finishes. We need to change the function to finish one for those two new layers so that all three of the first layers are finish one and then change the material for finish one to concrete changing the surface pattern to concrete and the cut pattern to concrete pick OK and then the second finish we can change to stone maybe as a choice depending on what release you're working with you may have a different material browser here in 14 and 15 when you want to find a stone uh, material you can create a new material here at the bottom left and then right click on that new material and rename it so this may be called uh, stone material and then click here at the bottom to open the asset browser which basically has all of the different materials that you can place in the appearance library especially I can find stone and highlight it or I can do a search for it up here and you'll see all of these different types of stone that you can use maybe a uh, river stone whatever you select here you have that new material that you called stone material here so if you double click on whatever material you decide it will automatically be placed as the appearance of the one that you have highlighted I'm going to go ahead and close out of this asset browser and then pick uh, apply and OK and you'll see that that new material called stone material will be your finish for one of these layers. You can then highlight finish one which is the concrete and use here the up and down arrows to organize your layers so that maybe the stone is one and the masonry is two and the concrete is three. Highlight concrete, pick assign layers and then select in the section that first portion that we split. Select now the finish that's the stone custom. Pick the assign layer button and then select the portion of that outside finish that you'd like to make the stone. We could add to this assembly by adding sweeps and reveals as we did earlier in the video. I'll go ahead and pick OK and OK and then pick the wall tool and you'll see your new split region wall. You can place that wall and take a look at the different finishes. If you wanted to create a quick region rendering 
you can put a check mark in region and just crop that region that you'd like to render just rendering a small portion of the view to take a look at those materials going back to the level one view we can draw a section from the view tab through these walls taking a look at their profile double click on the section and then change the detail level to fine and take a look at all of the reveals and sweeps and our customized split region going back to the 3d view the split region will split the entire finish of that material as an option you can use split face to split just the face of the material and the modify tab in the geometry panel you can pick split face select the face that you'd like to split and then use these tools to draw your split face shape then pick finish edit mode and then just underneath the split face icon there's an icon called paint you can change the material maybe carpet and select here the portion of the face that you'd like to change this is a great tool for sidewalks and splitting the surface of floor material from one room to another just a couple of quick tools that I'd like to mention we'll go back to the section view in the modify tab we could use join geometry to visually join here these two elements so that the bold line continues around those elements so if you had a floor surface coming through here and it wasn't cleaning up you could use join geometry to make that section look a little more continuous also in the view tab there is a tool called thin lines which just changes the display back to thin lines for a different display to work with let's take a look at extending walls beyond their base some walls have more than one grip like this one the material has already been unlocked and can extend beyond its base to have more control over extending materials beyond their base you can select the wall and then pick edit type and pick edit then in the preview pick modify and go close to the end of the material that you'd like to extend you'll see it highlight when you left click you'll see a little lock click right on top of that lock to unlock it giving you more control over extending that material pick OK and OK and now selecting that wall you'll see two grips because we unlocked that wall material we can extend it beyond its base in the level one view if we draw a wall that's an interior five inch partition we know that at the intersection of this wall it's going to automatically clean up if we want to disallow that wall to be joined and cleaned up with this other wall we can highlight the wall right click and pick disallow join now as I pull my interior wall close to the exterior wall it will not clean up if I select the wall and then pick the small toggle here I can join the wall 
and clean up that intersection. Also, in the Modify tab, in the Geometry panel, you'll find the Wall Joints tool. The Wall Joints tool will help you change the look of these corners, wall corners. Select here the corner and then notice in the options bar you have a butt joint and a miter. If you pick in front of miter you'll see that the display changes. Go to the home tab and pick component model in place. We're creating an in-place wall that has a unique shape and attaching a category to it. It does make a difference what category you pick because it will take on the properties of that category. We'll scroll down to Walls and pick OK. And we'll call this In-Place Wall and then pick OK. Here you'll see some of the same tools that we used when we were creating mass models and using the create form tool. We will come back to these forms in the family editor module when we create advanced models for our families. So we're going to create a sweep. We can go ahead and select sweep and draw a path by picking sketch path we can draw a path for our wall. We can then finish that path by picking here the green check mark. And you'll notice that there's a profile here on the path. We can select it and pick Edit Profile and then draw the profile of our wall using these draw tools. Once you draw the profile of your wall, pick Finish Edit Mode, and then pick it again, then pick Finish Model, and your wall is created. If we place a door or a window in this wall, it retains the properties of a wall to place inserts and work with wall properties, like selecting the wall and picking Edit in Place, and then selecting the wall again so that we can change the material finish in the properties to something like concrete. Pick OK. Making sure that concrete does have the surface pattern and the cut pattern as concrete. We can pick OK and see that that wall has been changed to the material concrete. I can pick finish and see the new in place wall. Now let's take a look at stacked walls. In our 3D model, we can orbit around two one of these other walls. Select that wall and then pick Edit Type and change the family from System Family Basic Wall to System Family Stacked Wall. You can then pick Duplicate and change this name to Exterior stacked wall and pick OK. Now pick the edit button next to structure and see that there are two different stacked wall systems. Under name you can select the drop down and change individual stacked wall systems based on the walls that you've duplicated and created. Notice that your custom reveal and your split region are in this list. So you can create a combination of composite walls that can be applied to your stacked wall. If you'd like to insert another portion of the stacked wall, notice that one of the stacked walls is always a variable so that when you change the others it can be adjusted. So possibly for this top portion we want to make it the exterior ephus on metal stud. And you have options for changing the height and the offset. But more importantly, in this list, 
are all the different types of wall systems that we can create with different layers that will give us the flexibility of creating here our stacked walls. We can change the order by highlighting one of those stacked walls and picking up or down. Go ahead and pick OK and OK again and then you'll see that this wall that's selected is changed to your stacked wall. When you place a wall using the wall tool, the stacked walls are in the bottom of the list underneath the curtain walls. And there's our new one here. Let's go ahead and cancel out of that and place a curtain wall. Over here in space we can go to wall tool and in this drop down go to curtain wall one and place our curtain wall. It's like a sheet of glass so in the home tab we can use curtain grid to establish our grid locations for our mullions. You can place them horizontally and vertically using several different placement methods and then use temporary dimensions to change the height of the vertical and horizontal grid. And then in the home tab you can place mullions by selecting the grid lines, the whole grid line, or a grid line segment or all grid lines under the placement panel. You can also change the type of mullion by dropping the list down in properties to select different types of profiles for your mullion. By selecting a mullion you can change the way that that mullion breaks at the intersection making it go continuously through or breaking it so that the other mullion can go continuously through. We can go to the insert tab and pick load family and under doors we can load the curtain wall storefront double door. There are other curtain wall families here. With that loaded we're going to select the panel and you can do that by either resting your pointer here and tabbing until you get that panel that you'd like to select and then click or you can select everything with the window and use the filter to uncheck everything except for curtain panel and then in the properties drop down you can scroll up to the curtain wall section and pick storefront double door to place your door. You can also select a panel and change the wall type. You can select the panel, pick edit type, and change the material. Duplicating the glass material, you can change the material name to glass custom and then change the render appearance to a different glass glazing. You can pick whatever you'd like. I'll pick green and OK. There are several settings here that you can change for its glossiness and reflectivity. You can pick apply and OK. When you change your shading to realistic you'll see the material which will give you an idea of what it will look like when you render your curtain wall. I'll go back to hidden line and let's take a look at customizing our mullion similar to what we did when we customized our reveal and sweep we can go to the application menu and pick new family here in the templates we can pick profile mullion and then draw our new profile you'll see that this is the center of the glass we can use lines to create our new mullion Once you have your new mullion drawn to whatever shape you'd like to use, you can save this file as a different family name, custom mullion, and then load it into the project. When you load it into the project, we'll go to the 3D view, you won't see it under 
any drop downs, we need to start the mullion tool and then pick edit type and duplicate this mullion so that we can call it custom mullion and then change the profile to custom mullion. Once we do that, we're ready to select a grid line and place our custom mullion. If we select a um, mullion and delete it and want to remove this portion of the grid, we can select the curtain grid and pick Add Remove Segments and then select this segment to delete it, creating a different panel size. Now in the Level 1 view, we'll draw a curtain wall And then just as you would place a mullion in the Home tab, pick Mullion and then change the type to one of these corner mullions like the L corner mullion and select this corner. Then select here that mullion once it's placed and pick Edit Type to change the offset and the thickness. So maybe I should use 3 inches for the thickness and 1 inch for the offset. I can modify the corner mullion to the glass properties. The angle of that corner mullion will change automatically as the glass angle changes. In the 3D view, we can select this wall and change it to a storefront. The storefront is very similar to the curtain wall clear glass that we just created in that you can select a panel, unlock it, and change its properties. If you select the entire storefront panel, you can pick Edit Type and change the vertical and horizontal grid pattern spacing along with the vertical and horizontal mullions. We looked at several wall tools in this module and we'll come back to advanced curtain wall applications in Chapter 15 when we work with the Family Editor. We also talked about divided surfaces and custom patterns when we look at mass modeling.